welcome to another Watercolor Wednesday. In this one, I wanted to go back to some cut up art pieces of paper that I have that were mounted on cardboard. And one of my favorite things to do is to embroider back into my paintings. So I picked out a square that felt like it was ready for some jazzed up detail. And normally I would use my bookmaking all to puncture the holes, but that's upstairs. So I just grabbed a push pin and I just kind of start mapping out where I want my stitches to go. I work very intuitively when I embroider, whether that's on, you know, on a hoop or into a painting and just kind of let the moment help navigate, help me navigate what I want to do next. So in this one, I just kind of, I wanted to use this blue thread, pop the blues in the painting a little bit more. So I just kind of started puncturing holes along the edge of a blue section of the piece. And then I threaded my needle. I, I always divide my embroidery flosses into down to three threads. They come in six and I like to have that. So I still get a very bold line, but it's not as bold as the original embroidery floss comes. So if you're gonna try this, I highly recommend you play around with the different line weight that you can achieve by using the floss as it comes and also thinning it out. You can go all the way down to a single thread and it's really fun to use a variation of those in your pieces. But for this one, I'm using the half of it, so three strands, and then it ends up doubled because of the way I threaded my needle. So I'm just stitching around the edge. This is a technique that I really like to do. It kind of, it breaks the edge of the painting a bit and kind of makes it, give it or gives it a wrapped feel, kind of like a, you know, a, like a mounted canvas would, which I really like. And then kind of just seeing after each section is done what I want to do next. And then when I get to the end of a section or my thread is running out, I always go to the back side and try to knot it off as best I can. And that just kind of helps secure your stitches. And I do like to do it in sections like that, both because of how much thread I like to work with and then also just making sure that everything's nice and secure as I move to another part of the artwork. So then I move down to another section and start puncturing holes along there. I oftentimes find myself doing repetition with the type of stitching that I do. One, because I like repetition and it's aesthetically pleasing. And two, it just, it tends to be based on my mood. I kind of find a stitch that feels right for that art making session. And I kind of like to just stick with it until something else inspires me. So for this one, I'm doing some longer pieces kind of going over the streaks of paint that are happening on the front of the picture and getting a little bit creative with how I knot it on the back so that it's nice and secure. And then sometimes I'll knot it along the way too. Like here I knotted it and then I moved on to another section. But I could have cut it and re-knot it and then started stitching again. But I just decided to jump out over to the next section and continue on from there. And then you'll notice every now and then I'm kind of, when I stitch around the edge, I do like to scooch it a little bit and make sure that my thread is going where I want it to. And here I'm out of thread. So I'm getting creative with how I'm knotting it off as best I can. I often find myself stitching up to the, the bitter end and then not really having enough to knot it adequately. But that is where tape comes great because I can just put a piece of tape over the back and secure it that way. And none of these are terribly precious artworks. And even if they were, I think I'd still do it because, you know, tape, tape was meant to be an adhesive and it works just great. Here I'm using washi tape because I happen to have some on hand, but in the past I've also used masking tape as well. So then I threaded my needle some more with some additional thread and continuing on, securing it again with some knots on the back just to make sure that the sections don't slip. This I find is especially important when you are stitching over the edge of your painting because 
when they're not going from hole to hole on the same on the you know, in the middle of the piece, they're a little more inclined to like to wander and slip. And then some more tape to secure it, just to make sure that everything is going to stay right where I want it to. Then I have a tiny bit of thread left, so I decide to do another section on the other side of the piece, punching holes along the way. Push pins are such a great tool for this. So if you are into bookmaking and you have a bookmaking all like they work great too, but you almost have a little bit more control with the push pin because your fingers are right there and it, they just work awesome. And it's easy enough to have those on hand in your art making space and they take up less space than an owl does. <music> What I like about this section of the piece at this point is that the blue going around the edge on the white section kind of helps unify the piece as a whole. It continues the line quality that I've created in the other sides of the picture, but it also maintains the brightness while also breaking it up a bit, which is something that I, I guess I could have achieved that with marker too, but I love that it's got the three-dimensional quality of the thread. And again, securing on the back, knotting it through, and then I broke my needle. <laughs> so that's never happened before, so that was interesting. So I just cut that off and knotted it the rest of the way and trimmed it up. Now I'm pretty happy with the, the stitching at this point, but it feels like it needs something more. So I decided to get up my watercolors and continue on with the color palette that the original piece was done in, but really beefing up the color and the value and the hue and just really going for it to create some drama in this piece. This is really fun. You can do the painting and then the embroidery, but don't if you're interested in experimenting with this, don't be afraid to then paint back into it or do all of your stitching first and then use that as your inspiration for your watercolor or your acrylic or your gouache. Any of those paint mediums will work really well with embroidery. So I, rec I highly encourage you to try all of it and just go for it. So I'm mixing up some colors, trying to match what I had in the original piece and really just having fun, having a lot, a lot of fun. At this stage, I'm still maintaining the lighter areas that I had in the original watercolor, but eventually I'm going to get very brave and just go for it and still keep them lighter. But like here, I'm, you know, I've created a new section of color because the whiteness was still there or it was like really light pink, I think, in that part. Just continuing to beef up the color and play around and layer it up until it feels it feels resolved and like it's ready to be done. I absolutely love watercolor embroidery as I said so if this is something that you are curious about checking out more I have a Skillshare class that is embroidering back into your paintings both watercolor and acrylic you could also do this with gouache. So if you are curious about learning more ways to incorporate embroidery into your paintings, definitely check that out. I'll be sure to drop the link in the description below. And I have loved sharing this process with you and I'm so happy with how it turned out. And I'll see you next time.